Just like the baby boomer's failure to look to the next generation, our outdated competitive mentality for a world of depleted resources could have devastating consequences. Our economic setup encourages one-upmanship, competition and comparison, whereas the progress humans have made over millennia has been largely based on cooperation. In any species, in almost any animal, there is uh, always the potential for huge uh, conflict because with any, any species, uh, all members of that species have the same needs. So they might fight each other for food and shelter and nest sites and territory and uh, sexual partners, all that kind of thing. But human beings have always had the other possibility. Uh, we have the possibility to be the best source of, of support and love and assistance and cooperation, much more so than any other animal. And so other people can be the best or the worst. You can be my worst rival or my best source of support. In a progressive society, to meet our common economic, social and cultural needs, we must move from globalization to localization. The benefits of a communal sense of fellowship, responsibility and purpose in a life driven by production, not consumption, would lead to happiness and satisfaction. Indeed, we must ask, have our modern consumerist lifestyles made us happy? I think if one had been living in the 19th century and somebody had told you that a hundred years later people were going to be living in this extraordinary wealth and comfort, you know, with central heating and being able to throw away such a high proportion of our food as we do, we'd imagine that we'd be living in a state of extraordinary social harmony and uh, everything would be rosy. And it's really quite remarkable, the contrast between if you like, the material success of our societies and, and the social failure. The growth economy demands that we make consumption a way of life. He who dies with the most toys became the ambition, and retail replaced spiritual satisfaction. Unsurprisingly, sales of antidepressants skyrocketed. The fact is that the world economy over the last few years, a good share of my lifetime has been built either on the military or on producing items that most people don't need and really don't even want when you come right down to it, but we all gotta have them. Consumerism is driven by our extraordinarily social nature, uh, that we want to have the stuff so we look good in other people's eyes. It's because I experience myself through other people's eyes, the feelings of shame and embarrassment or pride and um, maybe feeling envied, uh, all those things. So, you know, it, it, the goods are just a way of, if you like, mediating the relationship between yourself and others in this extraordinarily alienated hierarchy. What's really suffered is human relationships, family life, the things that really matter to us. And in the end, the only thing that makes human beings happy isn't money. It's very clear that past a certain level, you only get marginal gains from wealth. What really makes us happy is other people. It's our relationship with other people that's really been damaged by the last 30 years. We trust them less, we have less interaction with them, we bond less than ever before, we marry less and marriage is under more threat than ever before. And all the associations that represent sort of permanent, unconditioned human affection are being eroded or damaged. And that's the real legacy of the last 30 years. And in some sense, we've got to recover and rehumanize our lives. Otherwise, not only will they be nasty, brutish and short, but they'll be lonely. The West is coming to the realization that its human project is failing. The West was so convinced that if you push people to achieve as individuals, the accumulated achievement of individuals would make for a successful society. And what the West is now beginning to realize is that the individual achievement uh, without incorporating the vulnerable community is a myth. The idea was make your own life, be individually aspiring, and then you'll be individually achieving, and then you'll be individually prosperous, and then you'll be individually happy. Uh, you end up doing that in a glass jar. And the glass jar has a limited height and it's encapsulating 
and in the end you die of lack of oxygen. Human beings are alive because they seek attachment and because they're propelled by affection. So the isolated achieving individual in the end implodes. In order to find a purpose in life, it has to be outside yourself. It matters not how you construct it outside yourself as long as it's a positive value added to society pursued. Uh, but it has to be outside yourself. It can't be yourself. If, if you're pursuing yourself, you're pursuing, you're pursuing the abyss, as Nietzsche said. You, you, are, you are going to wind up in the abyss.